We're going to talk about this now. Dr Samuel Johnson, one of the West Midlands' most famous sons, pioneer of the English dictionary and, of course, uh, a big a big deal in Litchfield, rather a big deal around there. There is a campaign to restore a bust of Dr Samuel Johnson to uh, his hometown and uh, until about the 1970s, this sculpture, this bust, stood proudly above a shop on Bird Street. There are now plans for it to be gifted back to the city, providing it returns to its original site. Joining me now is Litchfield's Conservative MP, Michael Fabricant, and uh, the leader of Litchfield District Council, Conservative Doug Pollan, as well. First of all, uh, morning, Michael, to you first. Um, Good morning. Morning. So tell us a little bit more about this bust. What does it well, look like? Why is it important? Well, it looks like Samuel Johnson, which is probably just as well. Um, it was put up in 1809 over what used to be a printing shop in Bird Street. So this is 1809. We're talking about really lovely, historic Litchfield. And then in the 1960s, not the 1970s, when planners all over the country were busy knocking down thatched houses and wrecking everything and putting on uh, putting up places with flat roofs and uh, leaky windows and all the rest of it, so I'm not very pleased with the planners of the 1960s, you will gather, uh, they took it down and didn't need permission from the planners, who seemed to be quite happy with that. Maybe they didn't care and didn't know. Anyway, it's a listed building, and what's now happening is a lovely guy called John O'Oates, who is a local historian and tour guide. He's raising money, and, uh, apl- and the city council are applying to uh, the district council, which Doug Pullen is the leader of, um, to try and put the thing back, because the alcove is there. And uh, it's all ready, actually, to go back in place. I mean, you talk about playing. It's fifty years. We're fifty years on from that, so uh, we got, we, we're gonna we won't revisit those issues, Michael. But in terms of the bust itself, how big is it? That's what I mean. How big? What does it look like? Because we've got a statue of Dr. Samuel, haven't we, elsewhere mm. in Litchfield? But this is a smaller bust. It, yeah, yeah, it's about two foot high. Uh, so it's quite substantial, and you'll be able to see it from the street. Uh, it'll actually no no longer be above the printing shop because there was sort of, uh, uh, you know, how can I put it? There was uh, a point to being above a printing shop because Samuel Johnson, as you said in your intro, uh, wrote the very first English dictionary, and of course he wrote lots of things and lots of famous sayings like. If you're tired of London, you're tired of life. Apparently that was Samuel Johnson as well. It'll now be above a vaping shop, which is not quite the same thing, but it's still the historic building. The alcove is there and it'll be visible to all. So I hope the district council will allow it to be put back. Why does it matter? I mean, we've got a lot of things to talk about at the moment. Why does this matter particularly? Why do you want it back there specifically? Well, I just think it's a lovely idea. You know, Samuel Johnson is uh, really a very, very famous guy. And, of course, not the only famous guy to come from Litchfield. You had Erasmus Darwin, uh, who who gave uh, inspiration to Charles Darwin. Uh, People like Elias Ashmole, who set up the Ashmolean Museum at Oxford. So Litchfield's a big place. Of course, there are other more important things, particularly the cost of living crisis. But, you know, one thing doesn't exclude the other. And... You know, having a bit of pride in your history and having that empty alcove on the wall, it needs to be filled. So Mm. let's fill it with what it originally had. Okay, stay there. Stay there, Michael. Uh, Let's uh, welcome the uh, leader of Litchfield District Council, Doug Pollan. Doug, uh, where's it been? Do you know where it's been, this bust, all this time? Well, it's been in private ownership. So the the, the new owner uh, or the, the current owner... Who, who acquired it at some point in the past has kept it in a, in a private collection, but he's really keen now to see it put back in a, you know, rightly, as, as, as Michael says, rightly where it should be, uh, where it is intended to go uh, above, uh, you know, on, on the wall in a, in a very nice historic part of Litchfield. And basically it's going to cost about £6,000, I think, to yes. to cover all the costs of this. And, and there is a sort of, there's a, a campaign out to raise that money, right? That's not necessarily coming from the council. No, no, that's not. So that's uh, that's uh, John O'Oates, who, uh, who Michael just alluded to there, uh, as he says, brilliant local historian, uh, is leading that fundraising effort. And I think that's up to almost £4,000 now so far. So, uh, you know, two thirds of the way there. Is it going to go back in this alcove? That's the question. Uh, you're, you sound like you're the people who can make that happen. Is that what you're looking at? 
Yeah, so we're yeah we're really keen to see that, that bus comes back to the city. We're already working very closely uh, with the applicants to make sure, well, give them all the relevant advice that they need to in terms of how we're going to secure it to the wall. We're, we've got to speak, as you'd expect, we've got to speak to Heritage England to make sure that uh, they're happy with the proposals or, or at least to take their their views into account. So the, the sort of the key consideration is making sure that we fix it securely properly to a, what is a heritage building uh, and preserves both the building and the bus uh, for, for future generations as best as we possibly can. But that's what you're looking at. That's yeah, what you that, want to that, do. Yeah, absolutely. So we're really positive about this. Um, we, as I say, we've we've already uh, met. Well, our planning team have already met with the applicants uh, to to give them advice on how best to navigate this process with with the heritage assets that we've got in Lichfield. There you go. I mean, it's all the things that come across your desk, Doug. It's, is this one of the nicer right? ones? And, well, it is, yeah. It, it's exciting. As Margaret says, you know, it, it's always good to have pride in your sense of place and you've got a whole variety of brilliant uh, places to live right across Litchfield District. Litchfield is one of those, and we should rightly have pride in it. I think, as, as Michael says, it's a shame that it's not going above a printing shop, but Samuel Johnson was famously pro-smoking, so perhaps, he, uh, <laughs> perhaps he'd be quite happy that it's above a bank but shop. I'm not sure how many printing shops there are any anymore, to be honest. Uh, they're, they're not really around or, so much anymore, yeah, or, 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 or anything that is similar. There you go. Are you happy with that, Michael? I am. Well, I'm always happy with what Doug says, so uh, that's very, very good. Look, if people want to go onto my website, Michael Fabricant website, uh, I've got the story, and more importantly, I've got the link to the Just Giving campaign, and I'm going to give a, a bit of money too. So let's try and make this happen, because it's going to be local people and maybe other listeners in the West Midlands who've got this sense of history and love Litchfield. Maybe they can go onto my website, you'll find the story, you'll find the link at the bottom of the story to give some money to Jonna Oates for this campaign. And it's called the Johnson's Head. That's what the bust is known as. Uh, I'll come and see it when it's all in place, if that's all We'd right. We'd love to have you. As long, as, love it's, to have you. as long as it's securely attached, as you've just, <laughs> as you've just alluded to. Uh, Michael, we don't want it falling on your we, nuts. We don't. Cons- <laughs> Conservative MP for Litchfield, Michael Fabrican, and leader of Litchfield District Council, Doug Pollen. Thank you very much for your time. 